Oh, we just lost somebody. No. No? No, we didn't? No, I think we were on two phone calls, so I just hung up on us. Oh, okay. So we're getting double stuff, and I'm just waiting for your video to pop up, Jesse. Double stuffed. That's Mm. what I was watching this morning. Double stuffed? Uh Uh-huh. It was called Double Stuffed, starring your mom. It was Oreo cookie. What? I'm just kidding. I was talking about dessert snacks. What the hell? I know. Get your mind out of gutter. You're so rude, sir. This is why we can't have nice things. Ready? Yes. I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> My microphone is so shitty. I can't help it. I love it. What guys. setting is that? I want that. It's called radio. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is, uh, this is uh, Frank from Detroit. Colin, 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 go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, I was wondering, uh, last night... Sorry, I didn't have anything funny to say there, but that's a <laughs> good effect to be used. So, I got my new microphone, and I'm ready to cast some pod, guys. Like... Let me do the intro. You guys ready for this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it, man. All right. All right. Drum roll. You got the music? Cue up the music. Ready to go. To my right, we have the swimsuit issues guy, Phil. Phil, why don't you say something for us? That's good enough. Shut up. Sorry. Oh, hey. Hey. Okay. All right. Shut up. Next, we have the one and only. Well, no, that's not true. One of two, John C. Riley's, but the one who's closest to me both in my heart and vicinity, John C. Riley. How you doing, John? I'm a manimal, part man, part Kanye West. <laughs> That's horrifying. And uh, not with us is a man who needs no introduction. Because he's not here. And no one cares also, about him. <laughs> no, I care about him, but he's not here, so. No. Yes. Where is he? Hey, D-Ray. Oh, I wasn't going to introduce him, but uh, go ahead. His name's D-Ray. Hey, D-Ray. His name's D-Ray. Hey, say something. D-Ray, hanging out from the chopper up in... Uh... I-95 up there in Worcester. I'm um, sorry, guys. I couldn't be here this week. I'll talk to you guys next week. Cool. You know, everybody. Hello, everybody. everybody. Hi, everybody. Let's Welcome to the podcast. The yes, let's get on with the show. You know what I just realized? When I was going through the 48 minutes of the first podcast we were cutting, first and foremost, it was a pain in the ass to edit that and put that together. I'm glad that it got a good response, more than 100 views. So it actually shows that people care because – if we were at a 12 actually, to 15... I actually watched it 100 times. You did? No, yeah, I, sorry. I, and I watched it once, so there it goes. There, there and I've the watched it 38 times, and it didn't even register, because I'm the guy who put it up, so... <laughs> no, YouTube puts in uh, barriers for that. You can't... Yeah, exactly. It, it remembers like, exactly where I was the last time I watched it, so every time I try to go back to it, there's no way for you to cheat. Like, you know, it's going to be pretty hard unless you pay somebody. Or you, or you just get multiple accounts, like just you start multiple YouTube accounts. John 1. I, I just misspell all my names. Yeah, John 2, John C, Ruli. Ruli, Relly. <laughs> Druli. Gruli. Raleigh. Raleigh Fingers. <laughs> in the five hats. But I mean, the thing is, it was, it was quite of a pain in the ass. But so I think that from now on, we're going to be doing small segments, and they're going to be putting on YouTube so we can let you guys enjoy it. For the duration, but it's not going to be that full, um, full forty-eight minutes. It's it's a good time. I think it's you know right around an hour and stuff. But it 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 knows that like you know I'm probably never going to do that again. But it shows that people are actually watching because if we were maxed out at like fifteen twenty, then I would know that it's kind of like I wasted my time. But we're actually getting a good response, and I'm getting a lot of people as far as fans on the uh, Facebook page and on the YouTube page, and a lot of people going, "Hey, I like your page." and the guy who runs Aggressive Comics on Facebook, he sent me a personal uh, like friend request for his personal account. And then I said, oh, man, thanks. I really like your stuff. I didn't know you had a YouTube page. And he goes, hey, man, send the link over. Let me check it out and stuff. So I was like, right on, right on. So, you know, I guess definitely the aggressive marketing for Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. And, of course, Reddit worked really well. So thank you very much for uh, taking some time, guys, to sit down so we can talk about a couple different things. For the show, it's probably not going to be a full show. It's probably going to be in segments. You'll probably have a little musical interludes like this. And for our first segment, Jesse, you found religion. What I found is that PC gamers are are left confused and scared and lonely 
and excited. And it's, it's a whole mess of emotions here in the PC gaming world. I don't know if you're aware of this. I don't know if you heard of this little thing called Steam. I've heard of it. Possibly, yeah. Steam, this this incredible, wonderful little program you put on your machine, on your little computer machines. And from there, you can download whatever little game you like from uh, Valve or many other companies that use Steam service. It's great. For, for a DRM scheme, it's like the best DRM scheme ever. Um, they take care of you. They, the uh, customer service is fantastic. And, of course, it's run by the one and only Gabe Newell, who we all know is the inventor of the Internet and hot sauce and bacon. He looks like he's eating a lot of bacon. I didn't mean to say that, Gabe. I'm sorry. Don't don't hurt me. But Gabe came down from upon his golden throne and decided to bestow upon us three announcements this week. The first one came early. It was the Steam OS, and the entire internet just went crazy. Much like that, yes. Um, this this it's an operating system. It's based on Ubuntu. Um, but it's it's made specifically to run video games. It's not meant to do like anything else. It's it's for graphics. They're working on the audio, and it's going to run uh, most of Valve's games natively. They're really excited about this. So everyone, when they heard the three announcements, they're thinking, "Oh shit, they're going to announce Half Life Three. This is going to happen." Some people thought that. More naive people thought that. But everyone, everyone had a little bit of hope. So the second announcement. Everyone kind of suspected after the OS that it was going to be the Steam Box, or as they're calling it, the Steam Machine, that we found out on their second announcement. Um, the Steam Machine is going to be exactly what people thought it was. This was, a, this was not much of an announcement. Everyone knew that it was just going to be a little computer you hooked up into your TVs. Not very exciting. It was a little exciting. I'm a little aroused. So then comes the third announcement, and this is where everyone's like, uh, 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 Half-Life half, half, half Life 3? Half-Life 3? Three? 3? Three? 3? Three? That's like the seagulls from Finding Nemo. 3? Three? 3? Three? 3? So everyone waits with bated breath. The internet, at all at once, just breathes in and holds their breath. And then... And then... It was some shitty controller. Ah, uh, come on! Come on! It was a perfect time. You, you, you brought it up. You, you actually said the number 3. For the the entire internet thought that Valve was impossible was was not it was not possible for Valve to say the number three, but there it was their controller, which I'd say it's a shitty controller. It's actually very interesting. Have you guys seen it? Have you seen what it does? Yes, it, yeah, it, I looked at it. I didn't get a chance to check it out too much, but uh, jo- John, did you get the chance to look at it more? No down? analog sticks. It's all touch pads, more it's, or less. It's on the, the weirdest left thing. Side. Like yeah. I don't know what to do with it. It's they're saying that it's going to be uh, more tactile for you to be able to. Do stuff kind of like a mouse, but only for your thumb, yep. being able to move And also, around. haptic feedback on that, too. So you're going to be getting a feedback on it. So as you press something, it's going to push back on you, and it's going to get a little vibration. And also, the uh, the right side is going to be moving around right here, kind of like a second analog, but also pushing it down like a button itself. So. They both they both push down as buttons, and they have a touch screen in the middle of it. They have multiple it, buttons, I've heard. Well. What yeah. is this now, a controller? I was just, I was so... Into oh. Jesse, I couldn't hey, concentrate. Dre. Oh yeah, his I voice. I was I getting hard over here. Mike, it is. I was so excited, I couldn't concentrate on what this controller was for. What's this for? It's for the new Steam Box, Steam Machine. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Gabe Newell will come down and whack me if I call it a Steam Box. <laughs> Sounds uh, naughty when you say Steam Box. And Oops. with it vibrating and stuff, it gets me kind of excited. It does. Like a little, I'm not surprised. Back on balls. Nice. I'm not surprised I'm... that they uh, wouldn't have named it by something else. It's by Valve. It's Steam. You would have thought that it's like Mist. Or... Well, I was thinking Piston. <laughs> and actually, that like a company came out. I think I think another company uh, copy wrote, copy writ, copy written. Uh, copy wrote. Copy, copy wrote. wrote. Copy wrote the Piston so they couldn't use that, which would have been fucking perfect. But... But the Steam Machine now. The Steam Machine. And the PC gaming world is just confused as shit. They don't know what to feel right now. Yeah, because it's it's a PC-based video game system, operating system. And uh, the Steam Machine is kind of like taking that PC world and trying to make it into a console with a controller. It's, and based on Ubuntu. They're addressing is, people like me and what my biggest issue is with computer gaming. And that the way I can't feel it like I can feel when I'm holding a... 
of actual controller and playing it. I just don't get the same connection with a mouse and a keyboard. I know some uh, PC gamers, Jesse's probably one, one of them would be like, I sound crazy saying that, but I can't, I never feel kinesthetically connected to the video game unless I have a joystick or controller. I uh, see. I'm. I see. I'm mouse and keyboard all the way. I, I, I love I've had it. this argument with a lot of people at a lot of different times. It just doesn't feel comfortable or orga- organic to me. It feels, and I know. I know it's supposed to be even more precise, but it's imp- it's imprecise for me to to play it, that way. I can't argue with it. it. It's you know. It's it's a matter of preference, really. Yeah. And um, I I have my I have a PlayStation controller hooked up to my to my machine for platformers because I can't play a platformer on a keyboard. <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one can play Super Meat Boy with a fucking keyboard. Yeah. All right. It's or House impossible. of Dead Ninjas. Super House of Dead Ninjas. It's kind Super of really House of Dead hard. Ninjas. Rogue Legacy has been my newest um, craze. Spending, staying up all night playing that stupid game. God, I love it. Playing the uh, new Mega Man versus Street Fighter fan made video game. Playing that with a keyboard. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm gonna pass on that. But but as for you two guys, uh, John and D-Ray, who play more first person shooters th- than I do, I think that's where the biggest argument lays. I know some pe- fans of first person shooters that m- majorly prefer a keyboard and a mouse. Huge uh, debate. Do you got you do you guys have you guys played both? Do you prefer controllers or you know, what's your feeling on it? Mm. I think the contrast between playing a very popular video game on PCs versus consoles is kind of like watching a movie with subtitles. You can either watch the original subtitles and you're watching the subtitles while trying to enjoy the movie or you can watch it dubbed. I think that consoles more or less are the dubbed version of movies and PCs are the ones with subtitles because you have to do an extra step to enjoy the the actual content itself. So, you know, along with trying to watch the actors and hearing it, you also have to read it. I think that would equate to the left and right hands being able to work on the Q, W, A, S, D, and left click, right click, hot keys, and everything else right there. So, it it, it takes me out of the element sometimes. I just want to be able to play the game like I have grown up. And I think the reason why we played so many PC games when we were young, like Duke Nukem and Doom and Counter-Strike, is because... That was the thing right there. PCs were ahead of consoles at that point. They weren't really caught up. And then, I guess, consoles jumped ahead with uh, their first-person shooters and their graphics and and all the other great games that people just got into. So the the tides were shifted. D-Ray, your thoughts? Uh, I've never played a first-person shooter game on a computer, so I don't know if I can do it or not, to be honest (gasps) with you. I mean, I guess if I if I spent as much time playing a computer game as I do playing a console game, I'd probably get the hang of it and I could do it. But uh, I honestly, I've never I've never played one before, so I couldn't tell you which one I prefer. That's such a weird thing for me to hear. The only game I played at length on a PC was was Warcraft or was WoW, and even that I never could get into moving with the mouse. I was a uh, <laughs> I was an arrow key mover. And then eventually got a joystick hooked up to it so I could move around with the joystick and then push yeah, the button. Yeah, there's just certain games That's that so you... so weird. Certain games that you just have to play on a keyboard and mouse and certain games you... Like, I could not imagine playing Minecraft with a controller. It seems so foreign to me. But I can play other games on, like, you know... I, I wouldn't want to even though... I think that they're trying to say is certain people, like... Oh man, if you get Bioshock Infinite on the computer and you got a really awesome, great processor and graphics card, yeah, it's gonna look so much better than a console game. But I'm pretty sure that if I got a PS3 version of it and I played it that way, I think I would be able to uh, pay attention and go further in the story and the gameplay without having to worry about my left hand and right hand going and making sure spots, because it's kind of hard to run and shoot and jump and all that other stuff on a keyboard for me. So that that all being said, I I mean I was talking to some. Uh some PC gamers the other night who were upset that Grand Theft Auto wasn't released at the same time yeah, that it was on the consoles and being like, we want to play this right now. And this is a big part of the marketplace that people are ignoring. There's some people that don't want to buy a new system every seven years. They'd rather buy a computer and then just keep upgrading it. So I get where, the, where those people are coming from and it is a market that needs to be handled. So I think this is a step in the right direction with something like a steam box to kind of bridge the gap for people that are, are so married to PC gaming and so they can get the same experience because there's no reason they shouldn't. The technology's there. And it's it's a great you can hook up a mouse and a keyboard to it too. I mean, you can do any, you can hack this thing to bits 
um, Steam, it's all open source. Everything's open about it. It is this, open so source, but it's Ubuntu. It's so it's a lot of games. You know how the same problem you have with Mac trying to play Steam games, you can't play well, like Showdown. They have that. They have that um, licked too. They're gonna. You're gonna be able to um, while they're working on getting the the native, uh, getting it working natively. They're gonna. You're gonna be able to stream it from your computer to the to the box. So it's not a standalone. It's just a streamer, kind of like a, a bridge between your PC and your uh, computer. For some games, yes. Yeah. Some some games will still will the Ubuntu games because there's a ton of Linux games actually on Steam right now. Um, so the ones that you can't run natively, you'll be able to uh, stream from your computer to the to the Steam box, Steam machine, <laughs> Steam machine, Steam machine. Uh, it's hard to say. I'm used it's to funny. Steam it, box. it reminds me of the Green Machine. Like I keep expecting <laughs> the Turtle song. It's right? the Green Steam machine. Box sounds rock so much car. better. <laughs> it does. The green machine. It seems like the way to go right now because so many different, um, so many companies are producing mini versions. Like we talked about on the second podcast about PS Vita TV, and then you have uh, Ouya, and now you have this Steam Box, and it just everybody seems to be going that way. I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft comes out with a streamlined version similar to that so that would play uh, Windows based Android games. I'd like to see that. Be interesting. Yeah. Um, D Ray, you said something weird that just like weirded me out earlier, and then and then Phil went and agreed with it, and, and like my whole mind, like my whole world's blown right now. What did I, what did I say? What did we said you said that you've never played a first person shooter with a mouse and a keyboard, and I I, I mean I grew up with I played Doom, I played Shadow Warrior, Wolf I played Duke Stein. Nukem, like yeah Wolfenstein. I played all these games on my home computer when like they first came out. And um, like the the thought of playing it, those games with controllers, just my mind is blown. I think I might have played Doom a long time yeah. ago. I think everyone played Doom. At least they went over to their friend's house and they took like two hours to watch it boot up and then finally get to play for five minutes until the parents came in and then told you to get off the fucking computer because you're playing the fucking Doom. <laughs> the early but that might have been my experience. I don't know. The early Prince PC of Persia. gaming that I had the experience that besides Oregon trail and stuff like that <laughs> was, uh, was the King's quest games. And in, in, in those, yeah. and in those games I did, pl- I plugged in the controller cause I didn't want to move around with the Q W whatever the hell that shit is. I plugged in a little Tandy controller and walked around and, and that's how I was initially at the same yeah. time I was playing like Pac-Man and stuff. I was playing the King's quest games. The, the, the games that did it were like, um, GoldenEye, Halo, yep. those are the ones that kind of brought the the first person shooter genre to the consoles, and that's when that's when um, the sticks, the joysticks on the controllers were were starting to come out. I mean, before that, the jeez, who did it first? PlayStation. The first the first PlayStation came out with the second controller that uh, had the the dual, st- dual sticks. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I remember having that. I remember that coming out and playing. Uh, what was it like? Ape Escape or something, and using those two fucking sticks and eventually throwing it across my room because I was so unused to it. <laughs> I used to actually have classes in high school, like not like extracurricular, but this was like actual, like you have to pass to graduate class where it was just, uh, it was computer gaming and computer like learning. We would literally just sit there and learn how to type on a keyboard for a half an hour. Yeah, I, I, I took that, that class too and I failed it. <sighs> um, <laughs> that was part of I took I did commercial arts in school, so part of that was learning how to type, and um, I, I type yeah. like a motherfucker. <laughs> unfortunately, I passed those classes that I had to take in high school, so I'm very fast at typing for some reason. So yeah, I used the home keys. Huh. Can't read but can type. Yeah, that's, I can play solitaire like this though tomorrow too. So you know, anybody <laughs> yeah. wants to go one on one in some solitaire, I got you. I think one on one is the only way you can go in solitaire. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's a correlation. You know, if I was some kind of like science dude, what do they call those? Science men? Science, 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 science. No, that's not right. Guys, yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that. Science. Someone who does science. Let's call him that. Spock. Bill Nye. Spock. Spock. If you were a Spock guy, like Bill Nye or something, <laughs> I would put together a, a study and I'd see if there's a correlation between people who type and people who prefer PC games to people who don't type who prefer consoles. Mm. Scientist. I think it's kind of what John was saying. It it has to do with how much experience you had and what we what you were what you played the majority of your gaming on. It becomes becomes your first language, hmm. and and some people I know they'll get into consoles, but they'd argue that even now that PCs can match anything graphically that a console can do. 
and of it's PCs until and, oh go ahead I'm sorry Phil oh no just, that was basically it just that consoles are where it's at and I mean the PCs are where it's at and anybody who argues that's just silly blah 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 yeah I, I've I've had those arguments with people I hate arguing about this because really it's it's a matter of preference it's not really an exactly. argument there's it's no Pepsi and here. Coke it's Pepsi and Coke yeah you know that's what it is. Pepsi. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm a PC I'm pretty sure my first like first person shooter game was Duck Hunt. So mm. <laughs> me too, me too. A- actually, damn I mean, that's, dog. I think I still want to kill dog. <laughs> Someone needs to make if they haven't made it already a uh, homebrew type game where you just shoot the dog. Pretty sure that's available. I'm pretty, and then I need to find it. <laughs> it's a beta Flash game, probably. It's definitely a Flash game. I've definitely played that game on Flash. <laughs> needs to be there. <laughs> Next topic. D-Ray, I heard that you had an idea about shopping carts or uh, for, well, how did you call it? Shopping marts? <laughs> shopping marts, shopping, yeah. Shopping stores? Shopping stores. Shopping stores, that's what it was. The Tell me your idea stores. about, see, I'm a, I'm a CEO. I'm a big tycoon for uh, the shopping markets. Yes, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, Theodore Tycoon Smith, and I own the Save a Lot. Tycoon Smith. I like that. <laughs> I wear glasses. I wear glasses. I look like Teddy Roosevelt, and I uh, I walk around Pins, with a cane. Pinstripe suit. Pinstripe suit. Yes, and I like to punch very random important. people. Look at uh, Beetlejuice. I'm also very successful with uh, shopping stores, and uh, I would love to hear your ideas on how to make us more money and streamline our events as far as carts. More money. Give me more it's a money. good idea, but I know it'll never happen because it involves cutting people, like actual people's jobs out, and I I know that just wouldn't happen. I thought you were gonna say cutting, cutting people, people's hearts like, out. Yeah, I thought cutting people's hearts out or something like that. <laughs> no, well, I mean you could, but <laughs> well, I'll say, <laughs> young man, tell them. me all about it. I saw, I was watching, it was at a TV or something on CNN probably a week or two ago, and I don't know if you guys have seen this or know about this, but in like I think it was either Japan or China. They have, um, like, these bike stops. You know how we have the, like, when you go to, like, the library or store or whatever, you can tie your bike up and, you know, park it with the chain and stuff so no one takes it. They have a system where you you ride your bike up and you pretty much just let it catch on this machine and it gives you a code number and it takes your bike into, like, a a photo booth type thing and it brings it underground and it stores it. Kind of like in, um, like, Tokyo uh, Drift did, if you guys have seen that. Yeah, Yeah, I remember that. And it's also making me think of like the Jetsons when it folds it up and puts it into like a, a bike closet or something like that. Yeah, so pretty much same exact thing. So and then you come back later and, and whatever and you just punch your code in and it automatically brings your bike up for you and you you know, you get on, you leave. Neat. So pretty much same exact system like that. Somehow you know how when you go to like the stopping sh- stores, either like Walmart, Target, whatever, they have the designated spots in the parking lots where the carts are supposed to go. Well, what if you have it so it's on kind of like an angle or whatever, and you just push the carts in there, and they all sit there, and then they feed into like a same like same like tunnel system type thing, and that automatically just brings it into the store, and then it just pops up one at a time, and then you can just take your cart and go, and then when you leave, just push it back into that designated spot, and it starts to process all over again. So it's kind of like the inner tubes at Water Country when you're waiting at the bottom of the slide, and then it comes down and gives you the tubes, so you can go back up and ride down again. Right, pretty much same exact thing. Interesting. I think that I think that's genius. I think you should buy, 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 Mr. Smith from the Winchester Smiths. I'm no, Teddy Roosevelt like Smith, genius, the <laughs> third your Beetlejuice suit. I, I, I say, I say, in my Beetlejuice suit, I think this is a great idea. <laughs> Shop, <laughs> shopping like stores, Bush. shopping stores <laughs> with uh, with shopping carts with AI on it. <laughs> But you know, I don't know. It's a it's an idea, but I know it'll never happen because it involves you know firing the couple of car attendants that these stores have. So I know that won't. Ever I think happen. the digging up the parking lots might be also a hindrance. Eh. Now, would the I tunnel go underneath? I, yeah, not to store? like old stores. If you know, if you're if some if they're opening like a new like Walmart or something somewhere, have it like that part of their plan as they're building type thing. Not, I'm not saying go into the customers of Walmart stores. have enough techno- technological know how to actually operate something like that. They just stare at it like a bunch of monkeys around a monolith. Well, I mean, that could be a test, you know. If Walmart shoppers could figure out, this could really catch on. We're, we're doomed then. We're, we are doomed. <laughs> now, it would be one stop where the shopping stores would have, Shop. where you just you, you bring it to one particular location, or would it be multiple tunnels going into the store, underground, I climb in, in these there? Tunnels. This sounds fun. 
Is this like a giant like network of tunnels underneath every shopping <laughs> that, center that ever? That would be great, and there would be it's... sort of like an underground railroad of tunnel carts. Right? The shopping See? stores would there'd have multiple tunnels. Under there. There'd be like multiple tunnels. Kind of like a, a, a real-life version of Minecraft. We just start building stuff underground. I wouldn't be surprised if the stupid people actually thought that was an entrance. <laughs> we got another dummy stuck in the tunnel again. <laughs> Which shopping <laughs> store is it? They rode it like it was a roller coaster to try and get inside. They didn't make it. <laughs> Find <laughs> dead bodies of people. <laughs> jammed in between shopping store through. carts. <laughs> store carts. I honestly could see so if, if especially if it was a Walmart, I could see someone dumb enough to get stuck inside of there. I it, see like someone's kid getting stuck in there, or they're like uh, their pork rinds, and then like reaching down, and losing a hand as they try to pull them out. Yep. It'd be very popular for the homeless people to live in. I see a lot of lawsuits happening here. This is uh, how are we going to avoid that? Well, yeah, I just uh, you know, it's just an idea of designing. I'm not a safety idea man. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have to hire a person to guard it. Yeah, that the, the so the, that, the, well, the guys who move the cards already are... has um, I don't know, whatever you want to call him, a security guard or whatever sitting inside the store. So would it have like you know a That's robot awesome. hiding, you know, watching people, making sure they don't go down there, and as soon as they go down there, he kills them. Or the shopping carts could kill them because they're that AI. Them. The shopping they're stores could have self-aware shopping carts. This is like some Terminator back. bullshit. Yeah, you're now we're getting about. Scary. Back. Judgment Day is coming. <laughs> Judgment Day is coming. It's gonna be Shopping like Back to Overdrive, that Stephen King movie, where the where some trucks with a Truck goblin down. mask will be attacking us, yeah, and Emilio okay. Estevez too. ATMs well, are gonna to tell you to go DJ. fuck yourself. Well, as long as Emilio Estevez comes back, I'm okay. Yeah, when then we're safe. We need a <laughs> we need another Mighty Ducks movie. Could you imagine a movie Thank about God that? You said it. Emilio Estevez as the shopping cart master. <laughs> Jake Feelgood. The working title. This could be a horror movie where the shopping carts go evil. Shopping stores, too. Well, they, they will have a mind of their own, you know, so you never know what they're going to do. Just confuse people. Just name it like part three. And it's the first <laughs> movie coming out. <laughs> New movie. New movie from Couch Masters called Part Two. No, not, not, not just part two. It would be... <laughs> <laughs> that would really confuse people. I'm going out to see that right now. <laughs> the the cart attendant part two. Part two. Part two. The cart attendant two. No, it would, wouldn't be cart attendant. Fucking around. Okay, yeah. give me a moment. Ready? Emilio Estevez as Jake Feelgood in Shopping Stores Three. Bum bum bum. <laughs> this time they're coming for blood. A cut. I don't know where to put Check all in. the shopping stores. <laughs> We need to make this movie. It needs to happen. ASAP. That's true at all. <laughs> <laughs> shopping stores starring Ray Winston. I don't know where all the shopping carts are. Where are they? Where are you hiding them? Where the hell am I going to put all these bloody shopping carts? There's not enough shopping stores. Motherfucking store. Get out. Samuel Jackson. Oh man, let's get yeah. Okay, if we're gonna do this movie, the only way I'm I'm involved is Samuel Jackson. <laughs> what what would the opening skip be if Samuel L. Jackson was involved? His penis sold. Yeah, his penis. I knew that. I knew, I knew that gets you, D. Ray. Yep. No, no, sold. no. He, he, here it is. Here it is. Open up. You have Samuel L. Jackson coming out of the shopping store, and he's going to his car, and he's got all his groceries. And he's only got half of them put away in his car. He turns around. His shopping cart is already driving toward the shopping tunnel. And he goes, motherfucker, you better bring back my groceries. And he falls it down to the catacombs of the tunnels. And he finds out there's this huge network of self-aware shopping carts. And they hold him hostage. And then Ray Winston has to come in. And he has to save Samuel L. Jackson. And Samuel L. Jackson always has these funny one-liners while Ray Winston is trying to save him. Right. Do we have Ray Winston for this? Has he signed up already? Or yeah, he agreed. He doesn't have oh, much wow. going on. Oh. Great Judge Reinhold on this too. He hasn't done much either. He could be a bag boy. He's like, oh, they please. took away my jobs. And Ray Winston's like, Oi, shut up there. We gotta tell you <laughs> Shut up now. We gotta pay attention. <laughs> God damn it, I was Beowulf. Can we get him? I really enjoy watching him beat people up. What, Ray Winston? Jason Statham. Oh, Jason. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm Jason Statham. 
I'm here to race shopping store carts. It sounds exactly like the last voice you did. <laughs> which is which Us is spot British on. people, yeah. we all sound the same. That's 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 true. I've he comes in sideways on a on a Audi shopping cart. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello. Mini- I'm Earth. from London, England. I was in Hugo and Sweeney and Snow White the Huntsman. <laughs> the the what? The Huntsman. The Huntsman. The Huntsman. Yes. It's German? The, what is the this? The Unston, starring Ray Winston. Kirsten Dunstan? What? Hello, hello. My name is Ray Winston. I don't understand you. Speak English. I am speaking proper English. <laughs> you bloody we also twat. possibly get Emma Stone at some point to be in this. Yeah, toss Listen, how, how high of a budget do we have to work with? I've got like 20 bucks. I mean, I think her top list would just sell the whole shopping cart movie. I don't, I don't have 30 bucks. Okay, well, I'll add to you when we have 30. <laughs> okay, so we got 38. Uh, Sold. She'll do it. It's, guaranteed it's, it's, done. Done. it's in the can already, guys. We got this. Do not comply. Do not comply. You are not a shopping store. <sighs> Who would be the who would who would be the bad guy? The shopping carts. The shopping carts. No, no, no. But there's there has to be like a, a head shopping cart. Could okay, it be so like the be former bad boy? There needs to be one. It's actually no. It could be Avenger. Judge D-Ray. Reinhold. D Ray would be the bad guy. No, yeah, Judge Reinhold. Judge Reinhold yeah. is the former bad boy, and he can play semi retarded. He doesn't want to go full oh, retarded. Oh, how, oh, I got one. I got one. Judge Reinhold <laughs> actually reprograms the shopping carts. To do his evil bidding <laughs> <laughs> for payback <laughs> for payback on Emma Stone because she wouldn't blow him. There Perfect. it is. You're, you are you got you tunnel vision on this Emma Stone thing. Yeah, <laughs> which I don't blame you. I can't I can't argue. Go ahead, do do like, the telephone voice, Phil. Do I also te- think Miley Cyrus should be twerking somewhere at some point in this movie. Oh, that she's be twerking, and then all of a sudden the, comes out. the shopping store carts relevant. would bump her. We need Emma Stone naked and topless in this fucking movie. If we need any fucking success, that's the truth of the matter here. So let's get this whore naked. Yes, sir, NBC Studios. I okay, wonder how many directors it. have said that. Get on it, Couch Masters. Get this movie made. Ray Winston, Samuel L. Jackson, and Judge Reinhold. Co-starring Emma Watson in Shopping Store Boy. Two. Two. I, I, I think we got a blockbuster right here. I think someone's going to bust something. That's what I'm hoping for. I can see dollar signs, boys. Let's do it. <laughs> brilliant, <Thank> brilliant. <laughs> I, it, it hurts to talk like this. It, it hurts me too. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That, yes, that's right. That's how much. Question mark and lots of dollar signs. <laughs> Never sure if you're going to make that first dollar or not, so it's always a question mark. Step okay, one. Right, exactly. Step one, Ray Winston. Step two, Samuel L. Jackson. Step three, Emma Watson. Step four, question, question mark. mark. Step five, profit. <laughs> That's beautiful. We, I love we've it. Reached, we've reached a whole new low. <laughs> and the show has reached a whole new low. I like and, that. Uh, I hope we reach a whole new low every week. Uh, I'm hoping this, this is this is this week's all time low. Good, good work, guys. We're, that's the goal here. Thank you, thank you. Round of applause, gentlemen. Woo! I wish I had an auto tune voice when we did this. Oh baby, why you love me? Show like off. I... Sorry, that's my auto tune. What is that? Do you have a lexicon? No, it's a. Uh, oh, sorry. It's a. It's for for vo- for vocals live. I was using it at the show the other night. It's a. Oh, uh, okay. It's a boss pedal. A boss. Uh, I use it for like trumpet sounds. Like when I was playing the trumpet, that was the uh, sound effect. If you heard a little sound effect during it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want one. They're fun. Yeah, I want one too. That would be awesome. Do that telephone thing. Uh, the, the telephone one's the the best for the. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What's going on? And then I can be two callers, you motherfucker. Motherfucker, ma- what, what? Motherfucker, ma- what, hey, what? Why don't you shut up? Ma- shut up. Stop with that. You don't do it. Stop with that. You don't do it. Stop with that. You don't do it. Stop with that. 
Do you guys know that uh, this week, this week's South Park episode is going to be about Minecraft? Oh, nice. So that's going to be very interesting. So they showed a uh, quick clip. I love their video game episodes. Yes, yes. The World of Warcraft one was one of my favorites. Yeah, I like the golden piece. Uh, you guys recording? Yeah, we're still recording. Oh, we're still recording. Danielle wanted to say hi. Okay. Mom, get the bucket. Mom, get the bucket. She's allowed. Get the bucket. Get the bucket, mom. Ah, more hot pockets. Mom. Mom, the meatloaf. Mom, meatloaf. Mom, meatloaf. Oh, man, that was so gross. Yeah. Hand me the uh, <laughs> sword. How do you hand me the sword? Control alt left delete. Anyone that plays, wow, it's so hard to actually give anything to anybody in that fucking game. Wow. Wow. We're, we're talking about World of Warcraft. I'm leaving again. Oh, we we're just talking about the World of Warcraft episode of South Park. It can be. Oh, that was a great episode. <laughs> oh, it was great that that the World of Warcraft guys worked with them on that. Yep. And and made the custom custom. Dudes and everything. It was really good. I also love the uh, guitar Queero episode. It was really good. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, actual, you suck. Uh, like Minecraft guys on there at all. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I mean, it seems to be, especially because with South Park doing a lot of video games and always being in the industry, they probably know all the dudes in the video game industry so they can get the rights. to and, and no doubt that that episode of Warcraft helped Warcraft circulation. More people got subscriptions. I know I did because of that episode. That's what made me finally play that stupid fucking game. It's so funny you mentioned mine, uh, Minecraft and South Park because Marcus Pearson, better known as Notch, yep. just said yep. on Twitters, I love South Park more than I love my own skin. I have pretty awesome skin. So that's so I wonder, Maybe he's going to be in the uh, Minecraft episode. That'd maybe. be really cool because uh, the, the clip of it, has uh, all the adults going to this one little British kid who probably looks like uh, Notch, and they're like, a "I heard I, Syndicate is British too." He's like, "I heard," and he goes, "I heard that you uh, can teach adults how to play Minecraft." And he just closes the door, and they knock on again. He goes, "What did you want?" And he's like, "Come on, we have nowhere to go." And he's like, whoever told you that? We, he goes, "Whoever told you that?" I can teach adults how to play Minecraft was pulling your penis. <laughs> like, we have 30 grams of silver. And he goes, wipe your feet off and shut off your phones. <laughs> All right, I got to get going, you guys. Okay. See you guys. Bye, cool. D-Ray. Talk All to right. you next time. Hey, thanks, thanks for stopping in. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome time. We got a lot of gold today. <laughs> thanks for having me on the show, boys. Oh, no problem. Thanks, D-Ray. Oh. oh, hey, thanks for coming in. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, thanks a lot. Oh, I'm evil, D-Ray. I'm here now, and you guys can go fuck yourselves, okay? Well, this other D-Ray's gone, so go fuck yourself. Robo D-Ray. Thanks, thanks for tuning in, Robo D-Ray. <laughs> Next time, I'll call in from my cell phone and really make it interesting. Oh, you, please, <laughs> I know. oh please do that. You guys oh, remember both of the Vampire Slayer, correct? The, the the real Buffy? You no, no, the TV show. The movie? The movie? Because oh. the movie's the real Buffy. Fuck this. You, you know what? what's funny? Christine Actually, I thought the same thing. Buffy. Let me talk. Let me not talk over you. Go okay. ahead. Say it again. I just said Christine Swanson is my Buffy. I used to agree with you. I used to think that that movie was the was the Buffy that in my heart was was the right Buffy. But come to find out, I read on I read later that the series was actually the Buffy that the guy, who's that the guy Josh who made Reed, that Josh Reed Josh. wanted to do. Yeah, I, I, I heard the same thing, but it doesn't yeah. have, but it does not have Luke Perry in it. So or Pee Wee Herman for that matter. Yeah, and that's Luke what Perry. sells me. Luke so Perry and Pee Wee. You're Herman. basing this off of Luke Perry and Pee Wee Herman and Pee Wee Herman. So yeah. you're not a fan of Joss Whedon. You don't like uh, Anthony Stewart Head. You're not a big fan of Sarah Michelle Gellar. Or uh, David Boreanaz. No, neither am I. I'm not a big fan of Sarah Michelle Gellar at all. I, I I do like Josh Wheaton, and I do appreciate Joss Wheaton. Josh Wheat. Josh. J O S S. No, I'm calling him Josh Wheatons. So. Josh Wheaties. <laughs> Josh Wheaties. He's he's brother of Will Wheatons. Will Wheatons. The Will Wheatons. Josh Wheaton. I appreciate him as a crafter of a storyline and as a showrunner. And I understand that Buffy is probably one of the tight, most tightly woven television shows with the, I actually prefer Angel is it because I like Julian Moore, the guy that was eventually on Nip Tuck. Uh, I enjoy that actor and played Dr. Doom in the, in the really horrible fin- fantastic four movies. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I do appreciate what he created for Buffy. I just really do not like Sarah Michelle Gellar and cannot, all Luke Perry joking aside, I just can't 
I just don't like her and I don't buy her. The old, I just look at her and see Freddie Prince Jr. spunk all over. I just can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. That was a hell of an image you just painted in my sorry, head. Sorry, sorry. I'm gonna be. That's gonna be really creative when I put that together in animation. I was watching. Oh, do I have to watch that? Oh God. I was watching the Robin, the new Robin Williams series. Oh no, see, I don't take. Uh, I don't. You know, I appreciate it because I loved. I couldn't take the Buffy movie seriously with Christy Swanson. I hated it, and that's the reason why it almost didn't have me watch the original Buffy series when it came out. But this made it. I don't know, like Josh Whedon made it cool again to be a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know that Donald Sutherland was a really cool um, kind of watcher, but like having that dynamic of all different people, uh, Nicholas Brendan and Allison Hannigan and Sarah mm-hmm. Michelle Gell, but Anthony Stewart Head was just one of the cool, like I would have to say one of my favorites of um, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, just uh, no Buffy the Vampire, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Vampire Slayer TV show. Just because he was just such a cool character, and I just love. Of course, I can't do his voice because it's not a Ray Winston voice. <laughs> but you know, I've always pictured him. He would make. He would have made a great Doctor Who. That's my. That's my thing. You guys and uh, he's Ray a Winston. Of, no, no. <laughs> hello. I'm the Doctor. I'm. <laughs> no. You're horrifying, Doctor Who. No, 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 no. Anthony Stewart had the guy who played Giles, the guy who was oh, the okay. Watcher of Buffy. And uh, I just love the dynamic of the TV show because they did a musical version. They did one episode where it was just they couldn't speak at all until they uh, literally there was no speaking whatsoever because there was like a demon kind of fairy tale where like, they would steal everybody's voices and then they would come in and take your cut your hearts out. But there was like these creepy kind of floating guys in suits that looked like the silence from Doctor Who and they would like float around and like cut people up. But it was really cool, and I'm watching like a huge marathon. That's pretty much all we're watching next to, uh, you know, the IT crowd finale and a bunch of other things. So, uh, speaking of jo- Joss Wheaton, did did you watch Agents of Shield? No, I haven't seen the Agents of Shield show. I, I need watched to check it. That it's out. V- very good pilot, and it has a lot of really good possibilities, especially if you're into that Buffy style of a television show. I oh, nice. Got, I got I, I similar haven't... feel from the from the series opener. It feels a lot more like the Buffy type universe rather than the Avengers movies. It so so take that as a I mean that as not necessarily a slight against it, but it does have that kind of feel, that episodic big world feel. Nice. And Ag- Agent Coulson is alive and he's hilarious. He's the best part of the show. Yeah, I like him in the movies. He's he's um, great. He's great. Yeah, I got a question. And this yeah. will this will make or break me watching the show. Is that Luke Cage or is that not Luke Cage? It's not. God ah, damn it! I quit. I'm out. <laughs> oh, Marvel! All I want is a Luke Cage. Uh, Luke well, Cage they were out. making a Luke Cage movie, and it's going to start the Rock Luke Cage movie. Fuck yeah! You like you like, right, you like the Rock? In. I'm okay now. Okay. I overreacted, and I'm sorry. Yeah, I saw the movie poster for it, so they're in development right now. Oh, there's a movie? Really? Yeah, no, you haven't seen the movie poster as uh, no, I'm, I'm getting uh, on the internet. Dwayne right Johnson, now. Dwayne Johnson as uh, Luke Cage. Really? Ah. See, I just wait. Were you not listening? That's what the I just rock. said. No, I wasn't paying attention at all. I was too busy being pissed that there was no movie coming out. Now there's a movie coming out, and I'm okay with it. Oh yeah, look at that, Luke Cage. Would you look Heroes at that? Heroes for hire. We need more no positive right? African American. Wait, Dwayne Johnson's African American? He's not, or is he? I don't know. What is he? A Hawaiian American? Family guy where it's like, yeah, he's some kind of ethnic. I don't know. <laughs> we need more Polynesian superheroes out there. <laughs> don't they, I mean, can't they hire an African American character to play an African American character? Don't you think this is racism? They hired The Rock to do this. What? Give me a break. <laughs> That's almost as funny as Vin Diesel playing the Black uh, Black Panther. Yeah, I mean, give me a break. <laughs> or the or the short circuit guy getting that that uh, white guy to play an Indian guy. Yeah, they Fisher just, Stevens you know, playing uh, the Indian 25. guy. Hello, yeah, honey. What is for dinner? Yeah, that's the most racist thing ever on a movie ever. On short circuit and short circuit two. Short circuit two is worse because he's the main star of the movie. <sighs> <laughs> I think that, that's all we had to talk about. Throw that in the can. Throw that in the can. Do you guys have anything else to say? I mean, always, but no, not, not specifically. <laughs> I just want to plug my show out in um, in uh, Kittery, Maine. I'll be appearing live with uh, Doug Lobster Fist Studebaker. Ooh, and we'll be and we'll That's be performing good. um uh, the flamenco dance there. That's uh, Friday night at eight. You're just making my animation harder and harder to do. 
I'd like to see you do that. Doug Lobster well, I mean, Hands. Just find a picture of Doug Studebaker. They put lobster, lobster hands, hands on him. him. He's Can famous in northern Maine. I mean, come he's, on. He's, he's That's huge like in northern Maine. Huge in northern Maine, Josh. He's coming down to southern Maine to, to Kittery to, to, you know, to perform for the first time. It's, 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 a, it's a big deal. Yeah. He might bring two or three people with him. I mean, we're looking at a crowd of at least half a dozen. Yeah. It's going to be intense. It's, well, no, it's going to be in a, in a building. Oh, I thought it was intense. It's usually intense, but no, this time we actually got a building. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm open. Doug's yeah. Slop Shop. Yeah, I'm going to play a, play a Get On You. Get You, a song going to get you. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Perfect. One. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, we're going to say goodbye right now. See you so. next time, folks. Goodbye, Thank you very much everybody. for listening. You guys can check us out at www.thecouchmasters.com. The Couch Masters on Facebook. Jason Studios on Facebook. I got Issues Man. And, Issuesprogram.com. Uh, there we go. Issuesprogram.com. And at Couch um, underscore Masters on Twitter. Jesse, you will be appearing in Kittery, Maine. And you can also check out Jesse Paulwin Art on Facebook. And uh, Evil D Ray, what do you have to say? Uh, you can check out my stuff. Uh, what is it? Scumbag. That scumbag D Ray on Twitter. Thank I don't you. Know, don't I, are you don't, asking me? That, I don't know. I don't know D Ray. Wait, hold on. What is what Robo D Ray? What's uh, D Ray's contact information, John? I don't know. Okay, so just cut that part out. <laughs> just get, look, no, leave it in. D Ray, if you're listening to this, we tried. We did. We tried. I, I, tried, we to re- I tried to remember your stuff, but I, I mean, I could find it out. Okay, every, say, say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye. everybody. Okay, you guys, keep talking over me. I'm trying to do the news report. <laughs> All right, news guy. Just trying to do and every time I keep talking, you guys keep talking over me. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> Let me start from... I'll stop talking over you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. When I pause, you can say something. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. The, the unnamed student had an unloaded hand... I'm going to hand- stop talking over you now. <laughs>